Okay, good morning everyone. Good morning. Good morning. And thanks for coming along. Look, I've just have you here to talk about um, the Catholic Church has a diocesan council coming or conference coming up and I just wanted to for you to give us some of your ideas or perspectives on the Catholic Church. So firstly, we can start maybe by introducing you, yourselves, and telling us a little bit about your hopes and dreams. So maybe you, Cassie, if you don't mind. Yeah, um, my name's Cassie Edmondson. I'm in year 12 at Nagel. I've been attending Nagel since year nine. I previously went to Strathalbyn the Christian College. Um, I love to dance. I do that probably about 20 hours a week. Um, I have a little brother, um, that's me. That's you. Sam? Alright, um, my name's Sam Barola, I'm year 12 and I have been studying at Nagel for six years. I aspire to finish all my studies, to continue on the right path, to find a job, hoping to own my own business, for money, for, money, for myself, my family and my parents. So like that way I can obtain a high life standard and it also makes me have a sense of personal achievement. Thank you, Sam. Sam PB. I uh, went to Mount Tuckle Primary School before coming to Nagel in Year 7. Um, I want to be an entrepreneur when I grow up, but in this world it can mean many things as it's interpreted in different ways. Um, generally, the core of economics and entrepreneurship is surrounded by the problem that consumer wants and needs are infinite, but resources are limited. I want to find solutions to this problem in the future. Thank you, Sam. You my name is Emanuela Reed. I'm a year 12 student. It's my first year at New York Catholic College. I've gone to 11 schools total. I've, been along, I've lived in 18 houses and I belong to eight different churches. My uh, hopes and dreams, I'd love to become an author to help influence people's morals in a better way towards a better society before they've become too stubborn to listen. Thank you. All right, now this can be done in any order. If you talk a little bit about your faith and how maybe your faith impacts on your hopes and dreams or impacts on how you would like to make a difference in the world. So anyone can go first. Um, so when I was little, I went to church every Sunday morning. We went like part of our school. Um, uh, like we were really into it. Like me and my brother knew all the like stories and used to act them out all the time and we're really into it and then we've sort of like drifted away as we've gotten older we've like got like other things have come up and happened so sort of drifted away a bit um we got a navel so like we still do like practice it during like religion and all the masses we have and all that sort of thing. okay anyone else yeah so i grew up with a catholic mother and a father from the church of england so I've always believed in a God. I attended Sunday Mass as a child and served as an altar boy up to the age of around 15 to where I found myself drift away from religious practice. With study, sport and other commitments rapidly increasing, I found myself constantly turning down going to Mass. I wear a crucifix every day, but this simple gesture could not substitute for the connection I was losing with Christ and the Catholic community. I started to question my stance on religion and what it meant to me. I believe in the theory that some sort of scientific phenomena created the world and has developed into what we have today. But our world is too perfectly positioned, too perfectly climated and too perfectly structured to be solely based on science. And that's why I believe that there's some overlying power that's had an influence on our world. There are seven billion of us. We could be doing heaps of damage to each other on an hourly basis, but don't. We're still here with the Alpha Being and we figured out how to stay together. And for that reason, I believe in a God. Thank you, Sam. Um, my family can, tra uh, can trace our Catholic roots back to the first of the Crusades in the 6th century, the uh, 600s rather, the 7th century. Um, I've been moving around constantly since my childhood. I've never had the opportunity most. Uh, well, if you'd call it that, that most teenagers have had to drift away from the church. It's the only anchor that I've had as I've moved around the ca my Catholic beliefs and communities. Um, I am very firmly a Catholic. I believe in a, a full way, even to the fact that the Big Bang was triggered by God. Um, I don't always have the opportunity to come to Sunday Mass, but I try to make up for that, for that with weekday Masses, either before or after school, at least once a week. Um, and to ensure that 
to remind myself that I am not alone. I am constantly wearing a rosary ring, which is a traditional Catholic prayer ring, and a crucifix. Thank you. Sam? So, um, I was born in the Philippines, and statistically, 80% of the population are Roman Catholics. So yeah, my family has a strong faith in Catholicism. Um, when I was a kid, mum made, um, made me read the Bible every morning, every five o'clock in the morning until I was eight. And yeah, so every week we tend to go to church. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I do believe that there's a God. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about what, um, what does it mean to be Catholic or part of a Catholic community? Or what, even with your school, what makes our school Catholic? The sense of belonging, of mm -hmm. community, of an extended family, no matter where or who you are. Mm -hmm. uh, an acceptance to your personal beliefs, to... There are people who are not Catholics themselves who have belonged to Catholic communities. Um, and Catholics who can belong to other more traditional churches as well and it can still be considered a very similar community. I myself have spent as much time in the Anglican in the Church of England um, as I have in the Catholic Church. I believe that the acceptance that has come from both churches is equal and just as important as my upbringing and in the upbringing of anyone else who ever gets that amazing chance to experience it. Thank you. Anyone else? Um. I think that in terms of the Catholic community and the Nagel community, regardless of whether you believe in a God or you know, the whole history and the practice behind um, the teaching, the actual morals behind the church is something that everybody in this world can follow. Um, and I think that's a great basis on how to live your life. Thank you, Sam. Probably also through like the motto for others, like we all wear it every day, or like every day we're at school, and that's really like saying like life isn't for yourself, it's for others, and helping others and making a difference in other people's lives, not just yours. Cassie, thank you very much. And yeah, adding on from like Cassie's point, like being in the Catholic community, like we all share like vision for life. Mm -hmm. Like we all see the same person, same God, and all that. So we seek to live in the spirit of love, love the spirit of Christ with other Catholics, and yeah. All right. So, if you were Pope Francis, or if you were Bishop Mike, or even you were Mr. Carruthers, um, what sort of things would you like to see happen to our Catholic Church or our Catholic school? To engage more people or to be more meaningful to you as young people? Yes, you can have time to think. That's okay. Well, so I'd like to make a difference to the Catholic community by persuading the youth to improve and get involved with the Catholic community. Yeah. Because I believe that youth involvement in the church has been debatable. I tend to go to church every week, but whenever I look around, I can barely see any children around or any adolescents. So, yeah. So, greater involvement of the youth yeah. in the practices of the Catholic the Church? Yeah. You know, some say in how Mass is celebrated, that sort of thing. Is that yeah. what you're after? Yeah. Yep. And are the, do the, does the bishop listen to you at the moment? Or well, not that you speak to the bishop? Do you have a voice in the Catholic no. community? I don't think so. Not, not that you know of. Okay. Anyone else? Um, expanding on what Sam said, uh, I've gone to a couple of churches that has that have done that. Um, it's pretty amazing. The uh, children's school, uh, where younger children uh, go off and learn the the stories of the Bible, the key morals, the key Christian Christian and Catholic values, in a way mm. that they can better understand. Mm. It, Unlike most other churches, it wasn't run by adults, but by teenagers, yeah. which gives us a way to re-engage in the church, stop us drifting away, but also to, in order to teach it, it means that we must truly be able to understand it. So it just helps to deepen these values. But also, although I do, I very much love learning um, 
Catholic values about religious edu education in school, I truly do value it. I feel that having it as um, a required subject is difficult at times. Mm -hmm. If it was, even if it was just once or twice a week, we could learn just as much, but it would put a lot less stress on us, especially those of us who are trying to learn specific subjects um, for university or TAFE or another beyond school pathway. It, it, it breeds, it can breed resentment to people who do not truly understand it, who feel that it's taking away option, life options, and that's not how I feel the church should be represented. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, I think we should, to be honest, focus religion less on the actual history, worship, and religious practices like that and go straight to the morals, values and teachings of our religion. People my age, or the majority of people my age, are simply not interested in attending hours of readings and prep, and there isn't much we can do about it. There isn't much that we can try and do to convince an atheist my age that a God exists. Only specific life-defining moments can influence that kind of change. But teaching students correct morals, helping them find their vocation, and not just teaching them what the definition is, and guiding them to become better leaders is what we can do. Essentially, religion at this current stage is considered irrelevant and boring by people my age. I'm lucky enough that I've found value in what I've been taught, but there aren't many students who have. We need to find interesting and engaging ways to teach God's Word, give each student a reason as to why what we are learning is relevant, and make the experience of learning religion fun and exciting. Thank you, Sam. Anyone else? Kes? I reckon we should just relate it more to life situations. People don't want to just like listen to like, you know, God did this, God did that. Like if they relate it to what we do in our lives now and things happening in our lives, then we'd probably be more switched on and involved, want to be involved more. All right. Any other comment before we move on? I've just got some general questions for you. Um, the first question is. And it doesn't necessarily have to be to do with religion or faith. Is what makes you anxious, or what makes you worry? What do you worry about? Not knowing what I want to do. Like I know what I want to do, but like, are you gonna? Am I gonna get there? Like, am I gonna pass uni or like do everything? And like, you know, am I gonna be able to like have kids and like, you know, be able to raise them and help them? And will they be like safe and all that? Sure. Like, just the part. The future. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? What worries you, Sam? I the Sam will do. <laughs> <laughs> um, what worries me? I think social media is one of the main problems at the moment, and there's a lot of reasons why. Um, however, the main thing for me is that a lot of people aren't behaving in a way and working towards becoming better themselves. They're doing it for other people. For example, people dress in a certain way because it's trendy. People are going to university and doing different courses for their parents or because their parents did it or because their uncles want them to do it. People are, people are even behaving and doing sports and thinking they should be doing specific things just because other people are doing it. I think that a lot of people now need to start actually working on themselves and start thinking what they actually do and that has a lot to do with vocation. So um, that's one thing that I'd like to see change. Sure. Anyone else? Any worries you, Emanuela or Sam? If anything you want to add, you don't have to. but. If there's something you really want to say, feel free. Or, next question, are you comfortable talking about your faith to people of your age? No, no I'm not. Um, I've been to Protestant schools, to Catholic schools and to public schools. Um, and I am terrified of speaking to non-Christians about my Christian values and upbringing even to other uh, Protestants, even to uh, some Protestants, it's it's scary. I've had an um, experience with uh, some Baptist boys who's, who 
parents taught them to absolutely hate Catholics, mm. and I was just scared to speak about anything related to God with them, or how they would um, psychologically abuse me. Mm. I'm scared that if we don't find a way to bring uh, the Catholic, the one, uh, the wonders that um, ca Catholic values bring it back into the community, that we could lose that freedom of speech, that freedom of value, that option. We could lose that forever. It, it could become the next big taboo. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, adding on from Manuel's point, yeah, I think um, has been a worry. Because mm. when I was in primary school, I used to wear a cross as well. And yeah. people were sort of teasing me as well, like, what is it like? Why are you wearing, wearing it and all that? And I believe, um, from Sam's point, I think it's just because religion has become irrelevant to our society today. I believe that social media has become a distraction for um, for all the children and I believe that um, if social media wasn't that important in our society today, I believe that um, I wouldn't be worried as to why. Do you think the church could get involved in social media to give a more of a balanced discussion? Is that an avenue for the church? Yeah, like Facebook yeah. pages and stuff. Yeah, there's a church that um, sends emails and updates Ooh. their social media pages every yes, week that my cousins go to. Hmm. Um, is it working? Do you think it is? They have hmm. a higher youth. Um, they have a high, uh, higher percentage of youth come to their church than most others. Right. Um, so there's hope for the church in our society. You think if you look project yourself forward 20, 30, 40 years? Do you think there's some hope for the church? Or what sort of church would you like to see? Um, if we're talking 30, 40 years, it would be nice to see not just the Catholic Church, but all religions come together as one. Mm -hmm. Have a, I guess, a centre idea or a centre set of morals that everybody agrees on. Um, have issues like equality solved and that type of thing. That would be really nice to see. And we've already uh, seen like John, Pope John Paul, uh, yeah. number two, mm. um, bring all religions get together at a uh, event and they all prayed as one. Sure. Uh, Anyone else? What you'd like to see in a church? Cass? Unity. Everyone coming together. Not like segregating or separating people. Just everyone being able to be welcomed and coming. Okay, very good. I, I'd love uh, just total acceptance. I could say whatever I believe out from the Bible, from the Christian teachings. And I would not be in any way excluded, any uh, persecuted verbally, mm. emotionally, psychologically, physically, if in any way, I would not be persecuted. But no matter how small a church may come, help um, with this new, these new ideas uh, that religion is pointless, I don't think it could ever truly fade. I mean, the first 300 years that the Catholic Church existed, it was actually illegal. And yet, today, it's the biggest religion out there. So I feel that no matter how hard it gets, there will still be a church day. Mm. A lot of you, a lot of the students today don't go to church on Sunday. Maybe you could tell us reasons why they don't go and or suggestions what would attract them back to a church. Just quickly on that last question, yeah. I've got a nice little quote here Sure. Um, from Tom Ballard, who's a atheist comedian. It sums up what I was thinking Yeah. Uh, quite nicely. He said, I honestly think, without sounding too naff, the idea of a common humanity and coming together in everybody's interests is very appealing for global citizens such as myself. So it just comes down to that human ethic and wanting to be together and wanting to be loved. Who is that guy? Tom Ballard. Tom Ballard. Yeah. Exploring what we can do with the church to make it more appealing for young people to get young, or young people back in the church. I think many other you were saying? Uh that it's become boring if we added more songs, if we turned sermons um, a little more musical, even just adding um, non-verbal music into the background while the priests and uh, 
the Congress is speaking, it becomes a lot more engaging. I know that my younger sisters and even my mother sometimes find it very difficult to concentrate on church because of how traditional it can be. Yeah. And there's been churches where I've gone to where it's just been filled with music. Even very traditional songs just make a very large difference. Mm. Um, adding those five, ten minutes on to Mass actually makes it feel shorter yeah. if you're enjoying it. Okay, anyone else? Any comment at all about the future of the church? What hopes you can see for it? What, any comments, you're more than welcome. Speak up. Cass, you look like you want to say something or not sure? <laughs> no? Um, yeah, I'll go. <laughs> Sam? <laughs> so, yeah, I don't think that what the church is trying to do and what the diocese is trying to teach to young adults is incorrect. It's just that we simply aren't interested in the conservative values and traditions of Catholicism. We need innovative, fun, exciting and inspiring insight into religion. Since we're a generation which moves our attention within seconds, always are active in social media and our phones, we are getting busier and more competitive and are valuing time more and more. Saying, I read this book 2,000 years ago and it says this thing and therefore you should do this simply won't work. With our generation, we need to be encouraged to run Catholic teachings through our own moral processes, bringing our own values to the Bible, and then weighing the teachings against our internal ethical code. And then we might see a greater connection between our current up upcoming society and religion. Thank you very much. Any other general comment before we close? like now so busy like I remember like back when I was little like you know sport was all on Saturdays and Sunday was like you know when you spend time with like friends and your family and stuff but now like everyone's just so busy that they just don't have time to go to church and stuff or if they do they like would rather go to a sporting game or go to a party or go to their families like get together or something so they just keep putting it second instead of first all the time I feel like we just need to make it more engaging and or even just for a short, shorter time, so people can just pop in and then, you know, get on with their day. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? No? All right, jump in if you can, but thank you very much for your very honest and very candid responses, and I'm sure people will appreciate you taking the time to tell us what you really think, because that's what we need. We need to be listening to you guys, because you're our youth and our hope for the future. Not just you guys, but the whole young, generation. Thank you very much. No worries. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs>